Hello and welcome to another video here at AV Forums. This time we're taking you through our recommended picture settings for the Samsung UE55 KS8000 Ultra HD 4K TV. Now, before we start, we should point out that these settings were for the review sample that we uh, tested as part of the review. Um, and they may not be applicable for your TV, they might actually make the picture worse. So bearing that in mind, we'll now go through our recommended settings for day, night and HDR. So the first thing you need to do is to go into the menu system, which you do by pressing the home button on the remote control, then go across to settings, enter, and then we have a number of different picture modes. We're gonna be using the movie mode for our nighttime setting and the standard mode for our daytime setting. Great. Special viewing modes. Now, uh, whatever you do, do not use the sports mode. That just gives you an over-processed, over-saturated, um, uh, over-smoothed image. Uh, so avoid that at all costs. Game mode, of course, you can use when you're gaming. That will reduce the input lag. HDR plus mode is basically a fake HDR mode. So it increases the color saturation, it increases the dynamic range, but it's using SDR content, which was never ever graded to be seen in HDR in the first place. So whilst on occasion it actually can look quite good, it also can look quite terrible. It depends on the content. Um, but ultimately, our view is always, you know, what you should be watching the content as it was meant to be seen. And SDR, the standard dynamic range content, is graded to be seen um, a certain way using D65 and Rec 709. So that's the way you should really watch it. And HDR content, of course, should be seen as HDR content is meant to be seen. And we'll show you our HDR settings a bit later on. So uh, generally, we'd recommend not using that, that mode. Picture size, 16 to 9 standard. Um, make sure that fit to screen is on, otherwise you're going to be over scanning the image, you're losing some of the image and also losing some of the fine detail because of scaling artifacts. So make sure that that is set to on. Right, expert settings. Okay, backlight, 5. Now, this is a relatively bright TV. A setting of 5 is more than bright enough for watching TV in the evenings. Uh, when you've got either no light in the room or a little bit of ambient light in the room, you should find this a nice comfortable setting. So backlight setting of 5. You can leave the brightness control at its default setting of 45. We set the contrast to 85 because any higher than that and the image will start to clip. So set that to 85. Turn the sharpness down to 0. You can leave colour and tint at their default settings. Uh, apply picture settings to all sources. Digital clean view off. Analog clean view if appropriate off. Now, Auto Motion Plus, uh, you've got a number of different options here. For any film-based content, we'd always recommend turning this control off. However, for sports-based content, which is shot on video cameras, you feel free to experiment. But definitely for film-based content, we always recommend leaving it off. Smart LED, this is the local dimming system and um, there's two settings, there's low or high, but you'll find that low is perfectly good, you'll get nice deep blacks, good shadow detail, nice high, bright highlights, um, and no introduction of any unwanted haloing, particularly when you're sat directly face onto the TV. So generally we use a, a smart LED setting of low. Now, HDMI UHD color. Very important that any uh, HDMI inputs that you're using for an Ultra HD 4K HDR source, this is turned on. So for example, we are using HDMI 3 for our Ultra HD 4K Blu-ray player, so we've got it turned on. Dynamic contrast off. Color tone, warm two. That's the closest to the industry standard, D65. Now, white balance. Uh, we found when we tested the TV that there was far too much blue in the picture and not enough red. So as you can see, we've moved red gain up by plus nine and blue gain down by minus nine. And that gave us a very accurate grayscale. So you should find you just need to do these two little changes on your TV, uh, assuming it does have the same grayscale performance, which isn't necessarily the case, but you can try increasing red and decreasing blue and seeing how it looks. Gamma, we moved to minus one, and that gave us a gamma roughly of 2.4, which is our target for a nighttime setting. Now, color space, we did make some minor changes to the color space, to the custom setting, which is the color management system, but in reality, they were insignificant. So in actual fact, I just recommend leaving the color space at auto. You'll get a very accurate color, um, color gamma with um, nice tracking of all the saturation points. 
Okay, so that's the nighttime setting. Let's go back now, switch to standard. And as you can see, it's, it's slightly brighter. I, I mean, up to this point, everything's the same. So 16.9 standard, make sure again that uh, Victor screen is on, and then we're going to the expert settings. So you can see backlight is now set to 10. Um, the, the idea of the day mode is that it's brighter than the nighttime mode for watching TV during the day when there's more ambient light in the room. Exactly how much ambient light in the room will depend on your particular environment. For my particular room, a backlight setting of 10 was adequate for a nice bright daytime viewing experience. Uh, brightness setting, 45 still. Contrast still 85. Sharpness zero. Color 50. Tint at its default setting. Digital clean view off, auto motion plus still off for any film based content, smart LED low, and dynamic contrast off, color tone still warm too. In white balance, the uh, actual starting point, the grayscale we measured, was exactly the same as it was for the movie mode. So, in fact, it was the same settings plus nine for red and minus nine for blue gain. Gamma, this time leave it at zero, and that gave us a gamma of 2.2, which is our target for a daytime setting. And again, you can leave the color space on auto and you'll get a really accurate color gamut. Okay, so those are our settings for a nighttime setting and a daytime setting. We're now gonna switch our source um, and we're gonna put, put on an HDR source, and then we'll show our recommended settings for HDR. We're now sending an HDR signal, and when you do that, you'll see um, a message appear in the top left-hand corner screen saying HDR signal received, just to let you know you've got one. Um, we'll then go into the menu system again, as before, settings, and we're gonna select movie mode. Picture size, again, make sure the picture screen is on. Now, although it's movie mode, this is a different group of settings to the previous settings. The one we showed you before was for standard dynamic range content. This is for HDR, high dynamic range content. So when you go in, you'll see that instead, this time, backlight is now 20, brightness 45, and contrast 100. Sharpness is still at zero, color is still at 50, tint is still at its default setting, and digital clean view still off. Auto Motion Plus still off for film-based content. Now we've got Smart LED set to high. Dynamic Contrast off, Color Tone Warm 2. Gamma's at zero, and Color Space set to auto. So these are the settings you'll need for HDR content. Um, but they'll only apply when the TV actually receives an HDR signal. It will default to these settings. The other settings we gave you, it will default to those when it's receiving a normal SDR signal. And then you just select either standard or movie, depending on whether it's the day or night. And there you go. Those are our settings for a day mode, a night mode, and an HDR mode. Thanks for watching.